So to load the G-code module, you would click on the uh, CAM menu right across the top of your screen, and then select G-code editor. Now the, the purpose and the intent of this module is to be able to take your G-code file or your ISO G-code file and be able to, um, you know, view the uh, back plot, the G-code, and also make any edits, make any changes, and then repost it. So you can basically use this as your verification tool to be uh, able to view what your uh, G-code or preview it, back plot it, and then you can also simulate it and output it to your uh, machine controller. Now, as you select Visual Cam or Rhino Cam and then G-code editor, the uh, G-Code Editor browser window appears over here on the left half, so it basically it overlays on top of your, if you're in the mill or any of the other modules, it basically switches over from that module to the G-Code Editor module. And on the G-Code Editor module, you have the main tab that's called the Project tab in here. So first, I'm going to uh, load a G-Code file, so I'm going to click on Load. I can pick a file type. I could do NC or other file types. It could be .text, uh, .tab, dot, you know, CNC, whatever file type it is, you can select the file and then pick open. So as you pick open in here, uh, you can then set the arc type in here. So that basically displays your G code. So very quickly, if you noticed uh, the arcs, there were quite a bit of toolpath motions uh, when we when he first loaded that file. Uh, you might get scared about that, but uh, the reason it was coming in that way was because the arc motions are set incorrectly. So yeah, go ahead and change it then and show it to them. Yeah, so if I change the arc motion to absolute, so the arc centers, so you can see that arcs um, here uh, in the G code are basically previewing, the back plot is previewing arcs based off uh, absolute arc centers, but this particular G code file has arcs with uh, incremental arc center. So I'm gonna change the arc center format in here and then pick apply and then this basically uh, previews it correctly. So once I have the G code file loaded, it appears in the tree in the browser window. And you can see it also lists all the tools that were used. Now, I can right click and simulate it. Now before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and load the library, a tool library in here. So that was used for this particular G code. So I'm gonna click load. I'll pick the library I would like to load so we can load a CSV file. And this automatically lists the tools that are in the library. So we have a flat mill, an engraving tool, a face mill, and a drilling tool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add each of those tools into my tool crib. So by selecting add station, we'll select the tools, add them to the crib. And as I add them to the crib, you'll notice that it automatically map the tools that you added to the tool crib to the tools that are in your NC file based on it's matching the tools. So it's not flagging these dirty. So now when I go ahead and right click on it, I could do simulate. And this basically simulates uh, the back plot of your G code. Now I could define a stock and also run a verification. So here I'm just doing like a toolpath animation in here of the G code back plot. Yeah, so this is a G code uh, simulation, completely different from our internal toolpath simulation that's part of our CAM product. And you have controls very similar to what we have in our simulation where you can speed up the simulation, you can pause, go to end as well. So there's a tab for edit in here where you can make edits to the G code itself. So for example, I can right click on this and say, go to the bottom of the program, switch back to the top. You can remove these uh, line numbers. So you can click on delete line numbers. You can insert line numbers uh, to format the code to make it uh, easier to read. I can insert spaces in here. So you can see it's uh, easy to view the code. So there's a space between each and every coordinate value in here. So you could convert them from lowercase to uppercase. So you have the standard editing tools. You could do cut, copy, and paste. 
uh, rename or make changes to the program if you want to insert a few lines and then selecting save will automatically save this output in here it'll ask you would you like to replace it I could say yes to replace it and then finally once you have these created you could select output and this will output the file with the changes you could directly send it out to your uh, CNC controller or you could even um, you know, uh, just save it out to an external drive or copy it to your network and then have it sent out to the machine tool. Now, there's, like I said, there's two main tabs in here, the project tab, and as you edit the code, you will have the edit and the simulate tabs. The edit tab allows you to, uh, you know, modify the G-code output. You can also simulate it. I'm going to give you an example where we can simulate this with the stock material in here. And uh, you could make changes. You can even print it out. Information will give you information about the tools being used, uh, the machining time, and also the total size of the file, uh, which is going to be 14 kilobytes in here. Now, this G code editor module is also available in RhinoCam. And I'm going to switch to uh, Rhino here. And we'll show the same inside of RhinoCam as well. So in this particular example, I actually have uh, created a part right here, as you see it. And I also have defined a stock. I'm going to pick Edit. I'll go into Simulate. And right now, you're seeing the simulation with the stock. Uh, again, this module is available for customers who are active on maintenance and have standard and higher configurations of our product. Uh, a couple of restrictions on the mo uh, module uh, in the first release. Currently, what it does is only simulates three, uh, three axis, two and a half axis and three axis toolpaths. Uh, only handles that. And also only uh, G code at this point and no CL files or any, any of the other format files. And uh, additionally, what would I just mentioned about the AMS modules, uh, we are kind of doing a little bit of a different uh, way of selling this product. We are including that as part of all our all our configurations, as long as uh, people have the maintenance subscription active. So if your maintenance subscription is active, this product will you will get this product free of cost. Uh, and it'll continue running as long as your maintenance subscription is active. Once you go off of maintenance, this product will stop running. So, I mean, it's a, it's a really great uh, enhancement uh, for the maintenance that you pay. Uh, we feel like it's, uh, it's really a, a, a big step in, in terms of usability for our CAM products. So, if you have any questions on the pricing, uh, please drop us an email and then we can, we'll be more than happy to help you with that. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. So the controls in the Simulate tab are very similar to what you uh, are familiar with in our mill module. Uh, plus, you have all of these edit controls. Uh, in the Project tab, you have the options to uh, merge, transform, instance. If you want to make multiples of the same toolpath, uh, you can basically instance it and uh, create multiple, like a linear pattern of the toolpaths. You can have one or more NC files loaded per file. So if you are outputting the code based on tool numbers, you can have one NC file for each tool. And then basically you can load multiple NC files and you can simulate them. So it's not just limited to one loading of one NC file or one G-code output file. You could have multiple files loaded in here. And saving your file in Rhino or Visual CAD CAM will save all of the information that you programmed in the G-code editor module to your uh, 3DM or VCP file format.